demand is exploding exponentially for in, within our field, and not just within our field in healthcare agencies, but also in schools. This is a study that Matt referenced earlier. Seven, over 7,000 uh, job applications. The BACB basically commissioned an outside agency to do a summary, a state-by-state -state survey of, of job postings for behavior analysts, credentialed beha uh, people credentialed and applied behavior analysis. Over 7,000 job postings in two years. Now you may say, well, that's not a lot, 7,000. But when you consider back at that time, there was only about nine or 10,000 behavior analysts in the entire world. And most of them, a lot of them, a significant number of them worked in higher education and weren't going to be available to do con school consultation on a regular basis. But these numbers are growing exponentially. 28% of those job postings were for positions in schools. So this is good. Why do you think that is? Our field is gaining more credibility, but why is there such an increased demand for a applied behavior analysis, behavior analysts in schools? What's that? It's what? It's effective. It's effective. Yes? Yes, exactly. There's, there's LRE, or least restrictive environment. There's more pressure to keep kids in district in their least restrictive environment. There's FAPE obligations, free and appropriate public education, right? There's governmental mandates and guidance saying you need to exhaust all these remedies before you send a kid into a more restrictive placement. There's just a lot more pressure. And the reality is, I mean, I, I think it's a good thing. I enjoy the challenge, and I think we should embrace it. Something else that's very, very interesting, uh, this is a great article Matt referenced earlier, but I don't know if any of you know this, but it is projected by the year 2020, there will be between 40 and 60 behavior analysts. 40 and 60,000, excuse me, behavior analysts. 40 and 60 would be pretty low, right? Maybe in Micronesia, yeah. there'll be 40 to 60, right? <laughs> wherever that is, uh, above New Guinea or something like that. Okay, but this is, this is good, but it also concerns me. And it should concern us. That means we already have behavior analysts out there engaging in unethical conduct, okay, of varying degrees. And we're gonna need to have more oversight, but now we're gonna pretty much double, triple the current number of behavior analysts. It's, it's a little bit concerning. There's going to be more people out there who are going to need guidance in how to navigate difficult ethical situations, whether in schools or in other positions or working for other agencies. All right, school consultation. It's fun, isn't it? How many people feel like this at the end of the day of consulting in a school? I, I'm raising my hand because no, if you don't, you are probably not doing your job if you're consulting in a school on a regular basis. It is really challenging. I just recently wrote an article on this on, link, about, on LinkedIn. I'm very concerned for in-district BCBAs or for BCBAs who contract and work and provide direct consultation services in the school setting. High caseloads, right? Other responsibilities. If you are an employee of the district and they happen to find out you're a BCBA, you might want to keep that under wraps because if you're a school psychologist, you're a case manager, oh, you have your BCBA too? Awesome. Here's case management responsibilities and uh, evaluation requirements. And now can you do uh, 30 FBAs for me? Right? And some of you know what I'm talking about because I know some of you who are duly certified. Okay. The, the most troublesome things though are the lack of time for training and oversight. You, imp you write a plan, you might not be able to get back to oversee that plan for another two, three weeks, maybe even a month. And I've seen this happen. I've had conversations within district BCBAs about this. And the bottom line is, I don't know what's going on, but we have some really challenging kids. Agree or disagree? Okay, I've, I, I extensively with the BD population, these kids aren't even classified. And they're jumping on desks, bouncing around off the wall. I mean, there's some really, really challenging kids. With, so not only are you dealing with really difficult clinical situations, how do we meet the needs of the learner in this particular setting? But then, of course, the overlay of all the ethical challenges. So school consultation uh, is fun. I spent a lot, of times in a lot of time in schools. And unfortunately, on Take Your Child to Work Day, my kids do not get a day off because I can't take them in. They want to know what I do, and I can tell them stories, but my two boys don't get to come to work with me uh, because that would probably be an ethical problem, right? For me to bring my children into work. You know how many, uh, just as a side note, you know how many schools I was in where case managers, teachers brought their kids into work? Do we think that's an ethical problem or no? I saw a lot of that. 
bring your child to work day.